Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about the for next loop <coughs> and how do we set that up. Uh, first thing we need is a, a dummy variable, uh, I mean a counter variable. So I'm going to put dim i as long and then here, I'm going to write the for next loop and it looks like this. For i, so I declared a variable up here, now I'm going to assign to it for i equal to 1 to 10 next i. This is the for next loop right here. It uses a counter variable that you have to declare up here. And then you have to assign it a, a value, so like a lower bound. And then you have to assign an upper bound. And then at the end, you have to increment your counter variable. So what this line does, next i, is that inside this loop, you're going to do something right and then when it gets down to this line and it executes i is equal to 1 and now when you do next i it's equal to 2 and then excel vba looks at this upper bound and says is it greater than this upper bound and if it's not it's going to execute again this stuff inside here okay so let's see this let's uh let's do something here i'm going to do cells uh, and here's my row index and for the row index i'm going to put i and for the column index, I'm going to put one. So what this is going to do is, in column one, it's going to it's going to increment the rows and go down there. And I'm going to put uh, I in the cell. Okay. So here I here I have uh, here I have column one. This is column A is column one. And here I'm going to for I equal to one to let's make this a little bit shorter to four. Um, I'm going to assign the value of cell 11 equal to i and then it's inc i an uh, i is going to be incremented to 2 and it's going to compare it against 4 and because it's less than 4 it's going to do this again cell 21 is going to equal 2 and then i is going to be equal to 3 after this line it's going to compare it to 4 and then because it's less than 4 it's going to do this again cell 31 is going to be equal to 3 and it's going to do that until i is greater than 4 and then it's not going to do it. So let's put a watch on this variable here. And I'm just going to add a watch. Click OK. Let me bring this up. OK. And let me just move this over. OK. So. So now I'm going to run this and we're going to look at the value of i in the memory. But after I execute this line, there it is. I, I was assigned to cell 1, 1 because i is equal to 1 right now. So cell 1, 1 is equal to 1. And now when I execute next i, look at the value in memory, i is equal to 2. And here after I hit this line, there's 2 right there. And then next i again, there's i is equal to 3. Right, and I hit again, step through, and there's one, two, three. Next i, uh, i is going to be four, right? So here's four. Now this is what this is what you have to uh, think about. I is four in memory right now, and it already stepped into the loop, and so that means it compared four to four, and that's okay. So that's what you have to remember is that for a for loop, you know, it's going to do it up to and including the upper bound. Okay, so here we have, if I execute this, there's four. There's one, two, three, four. And now watch what happens. When I execute this line, i is going to be five, and it's not going to go back into this loop because the maximum value is four, right? Okay, so I execute this, and i is five in memory, and it stepped out of that loop. Okay, that's cool, right? So that's the four next loop. Uh, very simple, and that's all you need to remember. Now let's look at uh, some other things here. Um, if you if you want to uh, exit the loop, you can do something like this. Say let's say um, you're looping through some cells here, and I have a name Bob, Jim, Joe, and all I want to do is loop through this column until I find Jim, and then I'm going to exit exit the loop. So how would I do that? So what I would do is just um, 
you know, I would need to know when to stop, right? So I could put in here, I could put in here, um, you know, stop at row three. So I could do something like this. I could do for I equal to one, two, three. Then I could do something like cell, I could do something like this. I could do if cells I dot value. If cells I dot value is equal to Jim, if I'm if I'm looking for Jim, then I'm going to exit four. So this exit four, it will exit the for loop. So you don't need to loop through everything if you don't want to, right? It's gonna exit the four. And now if we run this, if we run this first time, uh Let's just do something else here. Let, let me just select this cell. So I'll do select. So you can select the cell. And now we're going to go through. And you see, I selected the first cell. And now I'm testing the value in that cell. Is it Jim? It's not. So it's going to skip over that loop. And I is going to be increment. And then it's going to come into, it's going to find Jim. So here we are. In this uh, expression right here, if cells i one dot value is equal to Jim, then exit four. So let's see what happens. Here, when I execute this exit four, it's going to jump out of this for loop. Watch, it goes right from exit four to the end of the sub. Now, if you had more code underneath here, it would go to that code. So it doesn't exit. It doesn't go to the end subline. It goes to anything after next i. So that's how you would exit a for loop. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, let's say that if I find Jim, let's say I don't want to exit it, but here's just something you could do is like you could do cells i comma one dot. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Can we do this interior? Oh, let me get out of this mode. Interior. So you could you, let's change the color of the background. Color index equal to five. Now, I, I, you know, I don't know the color indexes by heart or anything, but I'm just guessing that this color index is something. So what this is doing is accessing the, you know, this cell, this cells is an object, right? And it has properties like interior and color index. And I'm just going to set it to five and five is some color. So if I just run this, I guess it's blue, right? If I change this to three, you know, and I run it again, it's red. Okay. So... I don't know the color indexes off of my head, but I know that there is some property for a cells object and uh, for a cell that has color and you could set that color here. So you could do, you know, you could loop through something and you could set the colors or you can stop, you know, this expression here can be whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have to be Jim. It could be whatever. It could be a complicated thing or, or whatever you want. But one thing to do, one thing to note is that you know, we hard coded when to stop here because we said we're going to go from i equal to 1 down to uh, 3. But that's really bad because a lot of times when you're working in Excel, you don't know when the last cell is, right? Like you don't know that the last row is going to be 3 because you have this data that who knows where you get your data from. So what you can do then is you can do something like this. You could do cells um, rows dot count comma one and then you could do dot end uh, let's see and Excel up dot row so what this does here is this will find the last row in a column that you write so let me just do something here. I'm going to declare another dim last row as integer, and then I'm going to set last row equal to this thing. So last row is going to be equal to the, the last row of column one, which should be three. But it, let me do something here. I'm going, to put, I'm going to put something else there. So it should be four now. And then what I'll do is I could use this for loop in, instead of stopping at a hard-coded number. Now it's dynamic and I could stop at the last row. And so what this thing is doing is, is looking at the cells and 
it's looking at if you put this parentheses up here the row index and the column index right so it looks at all the rows in this column that's what that's doing it, that's a a range of cells it's looking at all of this what I have highlighted and it's saying here go from the end of that range up so it's starting all the way down at the end of the worksheet and it's going up until it finds a empty and until it finds a uh, the, the the last used row so that's what that's doing okay so let's let's test this out now um, to make sure this works so let's let's just run this and now I'm going to change this to F and I'm going to change this color index to something else too and if I just run this uh, what is 2? Maybe it's not. There we go. I guess 2 was like white or something. So 7 is a color. So what this did, now look at what we did. We, we made a dynamic feature here that will, f now we don't need to worry about what the last row is. We can put in anything here. And if I, if I, if you skip a row or something, I'm going to put in, ba I'm going to put in a, a Ted and let's try to let's see if it notices this well first let's uh, let's see what the last row is so I put a breakpoint in the last row is going to be uh, let me put a watch so last row is going to be 9 and look at Ted is is the last row 9 so then I'm going to do my for loop from I equal to 1 here all the way to 9 and if I find uh, let's say Ted I'm going to make his interior color index of that cell uh, 7. So now if I execute that, there it is. The index is 7. So this is a, a for next loop. And let me know if you have any questions. And remember, um, go to ExcelVBASQL.com for more videos.